meeting is now streaming. <laughs> they can see us, but we cannot see them. Uh, God, this lighting is so great. Get over it. Hey, everybody. <laughs> you know, Gloria, every time I actually successfully do this, I get so excited. What did you do? What are you doing to my condo? <laughs> I was getting a glass of water and then it just, never mind. It's good. She spilled water all no, over the No, pool. no, 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 no. No, I oh. caught it. It's all good. Believe me, I would not leave that water. <laughs> I know you wouldn't. This is how we start. This is how we start the live stream. Yeah, why not? Why not? Anyway, so everybody, I want to introduce you to musician and daughter-in-law, Gloria Taylor. Hey, Gloria. So Gloria is in our new condo. I never thought I would say those words in the San Diego area in Southern California. I am in our dining room in Chicago, Illinois. Um, and Tia, we have, she's Tia. She'll call me Suze half the time. That's kind of what. So we haven't seen each other since the beginning of June. Yeah. Yeah. In a while. Our time out there is so precious. Let's give them an idea of like what, what we do during the months that we're in California. What do we do? We, um, we eat. <laughs> <laughs> say that. You, know, you cook for us and we I eat your food. <laughs> we actually, the, um, the patio there at the condo. I should turn it out. around. Uh, don't, we'll never get it the same again. <laughs> the I'm looking at a beautiful, um, beautiful paradise out here, and there's a pool, and there's palm trees, and there's, oh my gosh, it's, it's just lovely. lovely. Yeah. But we can social social distance on the patio. So um, Gloria and my son Zach walk in the door. They're not allowed to touch anything. They walk right through the condo. I have the doors on the patio open. They go right out there. They sit at one end. We sit at the other, and it's just it's wonderful. But not as wonderful, I think, as being in your backyard. Yeah. Tell everybody a little bit about, about your backyard and why I love it so much. Tell everybody about my backyard. Well, my backyard has beautiful trees. It's got a Buddha statue. It's got a Kuan Yin statue. It's got yeah. two cats usually running around. Um, and fig got tree. fruit trees. The yeah, fig I've got tree. a fig tree, an orange tree, a peach tree, a plum tree. Is that it? I think that's it. It is a beautiful, beautiful space. So My lovely. backyard right now, Tia, has um, a lot of dying potted plants. No, oh, it's too. Is it hot? Is that why? Why? Yeah. Well, it's hot, and I don't. I'm a writer. I don't remember to water them. <laughs> I get yelled at if I don't water mine. I walk by them, and they're like, "Hey, don't forget to water me." Oh, I thought you were going to say my son yelled at you, no. and I was going to get on him about it. No, no, the trees. If I don't water them. <laughs> Yeah. I to tell a little bit about who you are, in addition to being my beloved, one of my three beloved daughter-in-laws. Boy, did I hit the jackpot on that Aww. one. Gloria is a, I'm reading this from your bio because I think it's really cool. You're a San Diego, I know all this, but a San Diego-based singer-songwriter, energy and sound medicine practitioner, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, <laughs> Your music you've described as having the spirit of cosmic Southern California yoga rock. That's so folk cool. rock. I'd say folk rock. Well, it, this says yoga rock. Okay. Okay. So, but the reason I'm hanging on to that is I truly mean, as a yoga practitioner myself, I truly mean this when I say they should be playing your music in every yoga studio in the country. It's what Aww. I want to listen to during Savasana, during the poses. I absolutely love it. And I might have given um, your CD as gifts to a number of yoga teachers, too. Oh, thank you. I also, and I didn't know is about this CD it. by chance. What is that? Is that the CD you gave away? Go for the moon. I think I recognize that. Yeah, I recognize that. <laughs> um, plug, plug. You're, you, a uh, culture blogger wrote about you that you have the vocal ability to soothe any hothead as long <laughs> as they're willing to give you the time of day <laughs> that's true because when my head is hot you can soothe me okay 
So before we listen to you sing, tell us a little bit about your musical roots. I mean, go back like to your childhood. Were you attracted to music as long as you can remember? When did you remember this really becoming an important part of your life? Yeah, I think I always was. Even in um, when I watched, you know, like Mary Poppins and things like that. Isn't it funny? I don't know why that just came into my head. But I remember hearing some of the songs on there and just um, just wanting to sing and just always, you know, wanting wanting music. And then as I um, grew older, my brother played guitar. And um, I don't know, I just, I, I got interested in the guitar. I saved money up for my first guitar, which is a beat up old something. Yeah. I can't remember what it was. And I would, um, I would just, you know, listen to Beatles and Cat Stevens and Joni, Joni Mitchell when she came out, but before even Joni Mitchell, um, just even the early stuff and, and try to sound them out on my guitar. And it was, it was kind of my retreat from um, getting out of the house. And there was this beautiful oak tree uh, that I would sit under. And it was more of my, it's like my safe place to sit and and you were the you're the youngest of four yeah and you know you had older siblings so you despite having three other siblings i wouldn't say you had a lonely childhood but you were um sort of a bird dropped out of the nest a little bit so music was kind of your retreat i think yeah yeah i, I don't know there was just this isolation i i felt a lot growing up um, yeah, and so it was, it was my haven, it was my safe place, it was, and I think I wrote like one of my first songs at 12 years old. Did you really? You don't yeah. remember it, do you? <laughs> no, but I, I think I might still have those books because sometimes I, I, um, I look in this box of books in our house and it's like, oh my God, the date's on there. Yeah. Like, what? That's funny. <laughs> one of the things that I love when I go into your house is you have something that's very precious to me in your house. I mean, you've got my son. <laughs> um, but what I'm thinking about is my mother's piano. Mm. Um, I mother got that piano in the 19, I think it was around, uh, like the late 1950s. <laughs> and, um, it was after her mother died, her mother left her a thousand dollars, I think. Oh. And, uh, she used that to buy her own piano. And I grew up listening to mother play on that piano and mother would, she didn't sit down for long periods of time, but if she put a pot of water on the stove while she waited for it to boil, she'd run to that piano and she'd play the piano for a few minutes. And so seeing that piano in your house has always been special to me. I love that. Yeah. We just yeah. had it tuned a few, about a year ago. Did you? I finally tuned. Finally, <laughs> <laughs> because I kept nagging you. I know. That. It's like, have you tuned that piano yet? <laughs> I did you yeah. tune it yet? It's got a really unique sound, actually. It's a, it's a cool piano. She always liked that. And of course, yeah. the piano I have in this house, everybody hates. The boys hated that, hate that piano. They think it's a, I, but being tone deaf, what do I know? <laughs> You know, it's hard to play the one at your house. I think that's what it is. It's like, uh, I don't know what it is, but you know, I, and I don't tell anybody, those of you who are watching us because, but I bought that piano because it matched the furniture because I'm not a musician. Shame. Uh, by the way, if you're typing comments in, go ahead and type the comments in, but I'm actually, Gloria and I are watching this on Zoom, so I can't see your comments now, but I'll be able to see them later. Gloria will be able to see them later, and we'll both come and comment on uh, whatever you post up. If you have questions or comments, we will not ignore you, even though we're ignoring you right now. <laughs> I'd like um, for you to um, sing something for us now. Before you sing, I have to say that you and Zach, your husband, complain about singing on Zoom because it's you're, you guys are such perfectionists and you're used to recording studio quality and you can't get it on Zoom. And when you listen to it afterwards, the two of you go on and on about echoes and this and that, and you know, you can't really balance the sound. So just get over it because you sound beautiful. So would you sing a song for us? When you, when you go to a studio and you, and you hear how great it can sound and then you listen to the Zoom, you're like, ah. So it's, it's quite, a, uh, 
Quite I right. heard you when we practiced yesterday when we did a trial run here, and I thought it sounded lovely. So, Grace, oh, but you did say you're tone deaf, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, do you want to know anything about the song before I sing it? Yeah. Do you, what, do you want to tell us before or after? Um, let's do before. Okay. Tell. All right. So, um, this is going to be a release coming out in another week maybe a week or two, I'm not sure, but soon, very soon. And it's um, my first release um, since my album of 2018. Which so we're gonna talk about in a little bit, yeah. Yeah, we'll talk about that. But so this is a song, it's called Decision, and um, it's gonna have a really, really cool music video with it. Um, we're gonna talk about that too, I'm making a note. Should I, we can talk about that after, should we do that after? Yeah, talk about, I wanna talk about you and the videos afterward. Okay. All right, so here it is, it's called Decision. Tell me if you can hear it, because I know we had issues with the sound. Sometimes I listen and sometimes I don't. Lately I feel alone. Sundown fading, collapsing it all on my own. Making things matter that don't really matter. Sometimes I forfeit the game. Slowly rising, washing my hair in. I know what it feels like scared so far from home Yeah, I know what it feels like when certainty lands in my bones And I found a reason that kept me from seeing this pattern that raged inside, slowly fading till I was just barely alive. And I have a memory of time when you saw me and told me that you believed. Ask me a question. I was too young to receive. <laughs> I knew my decision was right. I knew my decision was right. Cause I know what it feels like scared so far from home. Yeah, I know what it feels like when certainty lands in my bones. Da, 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 da. Love it. Your songs always feel so personal to me. Yeah. It feels like when with your music that you have reached deep, there's nothing facile about your, your songs. Do you want to talk to us Thank a little you. bit about what might have inspired that song? Yeah. Um, 
uh, we, <laughs> it's funny that Nikki, my daughter and I are doing a video together because um, there was something going on, some, a lot of uh, personal stuff that was going on that she really had to make, and I had to help her, we, each other make a decision. And that song was one of the fastest songs I've ever written. Um, when I write, I'm very, I mean, all of us are really picky, but I'm just very picky about what I'm trying to say. Um, I'm one of those people as a songwriter that my goal is if I, when I'm really happy about a finished song, it's that I get this, um, I capture this moment in time that people don't often see and, and I can capture it and grab it and, and look at it and write from underneath, from above, from all different sides so that I can show them my perspective and show them a different, maybe a different perspective that they haven't seen. So like with decision, it was the same thing. It was like, oh my God. And it brought back other decisions that I had, had, had made, had to make. And, um, and it was just so, yeah, it was just, it was just a really challenging decision. So. Is you know. this, you said you're, you were going to uh, be releasing a video with this. Yes. Thank you for asking. So. Um, this is the one? And my, yes, my daughter. Um, no, wait a minute. Your daughter is my oldest bonus. Yep. And uh, she, was, she was the gift that you brought me when you married Zach. Yes. Uh, she, I remember when she was about in the eighth grade, it was a questionable gift. But now <laughs> <laughs> we love it so much. And uh, your daughter also is, she's an artist. A wow. musical artist, a dancer. She is an actress. She is immensely talented. I'm so I'm getting choked up. I'm yeah, so she's a, tell us about the video. Yeah, she's a teacher. She teaches different forms of dance. Um, she's she's just amazing. She she amazes me um, because I was a single mom with her for about twelve years, and it wasn't easy. We had some we had some stuff, and she has just flown through um, so many things that um, may have been hard for other, other kids. Anyway, um, so she's a dancer and she's very creative. And so she was, she had been putting these um, dances on YouTube in like a black and white silent film um, filter. They have this flicker to them. Yeah, it's the flicker. There's a line that goes down. So it looks really old and, and you can speed it up and you can reverse it. <laughs> and she got really good at it. And she sent me this one, one time and I'm watching it Meanwhile, my producer, Greg, amazing guy, Greg, we love Greg, had just sent me the revised version of that song, which just audience know, please, like that song sounds a thousand percent better because it's Oh, got, here we go again. Here well, we go. <laughs> because it's, you know, it's got harmonies, it's got really great guitar work, it's got this, 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 oh, this beat, it's just so, you'll hear it in a, in a week, hopefully less than a week, but... So anyway, so I, I'm watching this video of Nikki dancing in this really cool thing. And then my video comes and I have to play that. And I put the two together and I'm like. I remember when this happened because we were in California then. And um, and you showed me, you kind of had a rough cut of the song and you showed me the video and we were both like, oh. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but I'd forgotten about it until you brought this up yesterday. So anyway, when that video comes out, I'll make sure that I link it on my page. Everybody oh, yeah. can see it then. So talk a little bit now. Um, my son, my beloved son, Zachary, the one you stole from me, uh, but I'm almost over it. <laughs> He's a musician. You're a musician. What is it like when two musicians are married in terms of one of you, you have different kinds of music, you have some of the same sensibility. Talk to us about, about a marriage between musicians and uh, how that works. Because I know that you sang backups on Zach's album. Mm -hmm. And well, he actually sang backup on one of mine, a couple of mine in the first album. Plus, he was hands-on with Greg in terms of the production on that. Yes. He, they made you crazy, didn't you? Didn't they, between the two yeah, of them? Yeah, but he, you know what was great about, what's so great about Zach? He's going to love it. So I can hear already, I already feel him smiling. I already feel him <laughs> going, my wife. Um, it's that he's, he's, he listens to so much music, right? He's, he has got, his style 
like my style is probably this big. I like folk, I like, you know, like it's this, this is like this, I can't even see how big it is. So he hears, he'll hear one of my songs and he'll go, oh my God, what if you do this, this, and this, and this? And I'm like, first I'm usually like, no, ew, no. And I'll <laughs> fight him. And then he'll say, no, seriously, just trust me and do this. And I do, and it's like, most times, sometimes I have to really like, no, that's not gonna happen. But most times he's come, he comes up with these, I would have never, I would have never gone there. And Greg is like, I mean, that's what Greg does too. Greg is amazing. So with both of those together, I feel like I'm, I'm in God's hands. That, <laughs> I'm in that reminds me when, uh, you know, when you get your comments from an editor, like, no, no, that's not going to happen. That's not, and oh. then you're like, well. Yeah. Hey. Greg's not like that. My, yeah. I mean, he's so, that's what we both love him. He's, he, he's changed my life. He, he has helped me as well. Um, with my album, I, I first went into a studio to do some of the tracks in the studio with Go For The Moon. And I had no idea how scary that is. Mm -hmm. That is really scary. At least for me, it was. Because, I don't know, <laughs> it just freaked well, me out. You know, you're in a studio, you're paying for studio time. Yeah. You've got to perform, you've got to deliver. Yeah, yeah, I right? get it. And they're all like, okay, yeah. everyone set up, go. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, so oh. <laughs> I think it's been fun watching you with the videos because yeah. you're not exactly a super techie, but no. yet you were the one, you were way ahead of Zach in terms of the videos. <clears throat> and you, you've gone different places yeah. with them. If um, anybody here wants to see your videos, what is the closest way to access that? Go to YouTube or go through your website? What's the best way to access your videos? Um, probably my YouTube channel or, um, yeah, probably my YouTube channel. Or you could just go on my website, GloriaTaylor.com. And GloriaTaylor.com? GloriaTaylor.com. It's not Gloria, Gloria Taylor Music, I'm sorry. Hello. That's what I was going to say. It's GloriaTaylorMusic.com. Yeah, go on there and link. And um, uh, yeah. hold up, go for the moon again. Yeah. Because this, this album like. is absolutely, it's just, it's really, really a lovely, lovely album. So, um yeah. What do you think you want to achieve with your music in terms of what you want to achieve for yourself and what you want to achieve for other people? Well, my, my thing with my music is I, I really want to, I want to add um, positive vibes to this planet, especially now, right? Yeah. So I'm not into singing about being pissed off or being angry or getting back at somebody or even even like my heart is broken. I'm just not into that. Mm -hmm. um, I'm more into um, right now, actually this next album, I'm, I'm really about um, transformation, about how how we can heal ourselves, how, how we can um, love ourselves more, how we can accept change and accept who we are in, in life. and. So I'm always about putting songs out there that that aren't dorky. So there's there has to be for yeah. me because it can get really like in your face preachy, mm -hmm. and I don't want that either. So I'm I'm really again I'm really picky about the songs and the lyrics and things. And um, sometimes I'll ask Zach talk about that. What the yeah. Zach thing. like sometimes I'll be like, okay, does this line sound really um, you know preachy? Or and, and sometimes he'll be like, yeah. <laughs> like oh really darn it and so we kind of help just going back to that really quick he we as 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 couple both of us musician we're so different that he has the, the most of the logical part and he he's knows more, what he's he objective wants. you're both objective yeah. with each other yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah but i'm more like touchy-feely um uh, free spirit and and I'll play with whatever where he's he like when he went and did the studio, he knew his tracks, he knew his guitar work, he knew his drums. I didn't know any of that. Yeah. I just I just depended on uh, on somebody else and and then played with it in the moment. Not I really you know, <clears throat> bringing it back to me, that's you and I have that similarity in the way we create because that's the way I write. I don't okay. have a clear vision, you know, I'm going in and pulling from here. Oh, and, you do? I didn't oh. Yeah. Absolutely. So um, okay. one of the words uh, that as you talk about your inspiration and what you're trying to put out in the world, one uh -huh. of the words that keeps coming out is healing. And of course, that goes over into your other professional life where you do 
sound healings. And this is, this is going to sound pretty far out to some of the people here, and some of the people here might be really familiar with it. Uh, tell them a little bit about what a sound healing is. Just give them the, the, you know, the short version of it. And uh, so for people who don't know what it's like, it's fun. Okay. Well, the sound healing in California, anyway, because we didn't have them in Illinois. We do yeah. now. You yoga do studio. now. Oh, oh, yeah. We haven't talked about this. All the yoga studios here are introducing sound healing. You were oh, on, I never even heard of it until no. you told me about it, but you were on this eight, nine years ago, I think. Mm -hmm. And now every, yeah. every yoga yeah. studio has it. Yeah. But. I was actually toning in, in, and I'll explain what toning is, but I was actually toning before we moved with some of my meditation groups back in Chicago. Um, so it's interesting that when I came here and they were doing these sound healings that I just, you know, like, so, loved. Yeah. Um, so anyway, so sound healing, um, the sound healing here that I'm used to is um, people, we had about six people, six of us, and um, I would um, play the guitar and sing a song and I would tone into a drum, meaning I would just basically tone and ooh and ah, whatever I felt like <laughs> kind of at the time, because that's what it is. It's a very meditative um, atmosphere. People are laying on mats. There's um, usually people that have anywhere from 10 to 15 um, crystal bowls that they're playing. Um, there's didgeridoos. At least the one we had, we, uh, a gentleman had a didgeridoo flute, Native American flute, um, sometimes rattles. I'm, a, I'm a interrupting because okay. I've been to some of these sound healings and you're lying on a mat on the floor yeah. and you're, you're very relaxed. Usually you've got a blanket under your head mm -hmm. and um, it, some, a lot of times they're in the evening. Sometimes mm -hmm. there's candlelight or, you know, it's mm -hmm. soft lights. The well, one of them I went to, they were just a few too many did you reduce? I think one <laughs> plenty and guitar and when you talk about toning what gloria does is it's just fascinating she takes it's like a drum head it's about this big and she puts it next to her head and then she starts making these otherworldly sounds that are so beautiful and i i i have um tried to get her to explain where these sounds are coming from and she just they just come from they come from the universe and the drum head kind of echoes it. And so you're lying there. And sometimes if there's a leader, sometimes they're, they're, they're speaking or sometimes you're just bathed in this, this music. It's very, it's a very interesting experience. Everybody, you gotta, you gotta try one sound healing. Yeah. Uh, she would, the, the, the teacher like usually would do a, a chakra, a, a chakra cleansing. Yeah, so those are the energy centers in the body. And so it would just- That part it. never works for me because I guess I'm a heathen, but it's the music yeah. that I feel it just taking you out of yourself. And for a creative person like me to just be able to get all that scrambled noise out of my brain, um, I just love it. And I love when you tone. Mm. It breaks it. it up because there's no human, it's not no human voice. Right, right. At least in the ones I was doing. So when Zach would tell me like, cause everybody would be there with their eyes closed and the star machine is going. So you kind of feel like you're in a galaxy. You're, yeah. you're feeling like you're out of this world. And then he'd say like, he goes, and then your voice came through and, yep. and it's just so, you know, you're not expecting. And then when it does and you just, yeah. So it's really beautiful. And I miss it. We haven't done one since this whole I know thing. It's, it's hard. Happened. So you have promised promise me right now in front of all these people that when I'm lying on my deathbed, you'll do a toning. Oh, of course. I do toning. Oh, wow. Of course. I, I've incorporated in my healing work when I do, I do energy healing um, now over the phone. And it, sometimes it'll, I'll get that hit, like, you need to tone something with this person. And it's funny and wild because you'll, there'll be such a difference before and after. Yeah. That the person yeah. will be like, oh my God, that pain that I had in my hip or whatever that was, it just feels like it's just turned to mush. Do you all see why Gloria is the most fascinating daughter-in-law? I never know where she's going to take me. So, babe, how about singing one more song for us? Okay. You got a good one? Mm -hmm. You couldn't have gotten a beautiful crystal goblet from the counter. Well, they're not crystal. You couldn't have gotten a beautiful glass goblet from no, my... No, I'm counter. doing my blue thing. See, blue shirt, blue... That's your hiking water bottle. Mm -hmm. But it is blue. What oh, it is blue. <clears throat> Well, this next one, 
is a surprise. Oh, yeah. And it's um, dedicated. Wait, wait, I have to just talk for one second. Just one second. There's the name of it. You want to know the name of the song? <gasps> did you do it? Yeah. Did you, you dance away with me? I did. She doesn't know this, so for everybody, no, I do not know this. That oh, this had so to, cool. I had to tape Zach's mouth shut because oh my god, be like, hey, sure you don't want to tell mom? <laughs> sure. <laughs> so, um, and I have to cheat, cheat my words because I don't remember all the words, but um, yeah. So, so this is dedicated to Susan and all the readers, and um, I hope you like it. And please let me know, Suze, if you can't hear it, like do the up, up, up or something. Okay. <laughs> you scream your stories on walls and buildings, disgruntled gypsy who paints his feelings. I do my own thing, a sweet distraction, burning sweat till the sun peeks through. I think I want to try this time, trusting in the opening. You might disagree. We'll see, dance away with me. It's so confusing with all that's happening. You have a way of seeing right through me. This new devotion, your eyes adore her, a bond that weaves our lives together. With everything that's changed inside out, I want the love without the doubt. Now that we are three, Secretly dance away with me. The magic that you spin, the passion. Love my ring. You face the dark parts alone and raging. Beneath it all was love just waiting. I saw it in a dream everywhere. Parts of me painted there. I knew it in my soul that day we'd all dance away. Dance away. Whoops. Oh, oh she's crying. <laughs> I love it. That was really special. 
Yay. I had fun. This was a harder song though, let me tell you. I, uh, yeah, because you're taking this inspiration from some other person's work. I wonder if that was it, but I just kept, I had like five pages of like, nope, not it, it didn't flow or it wasn't enough. And um, that's why, you know, I actually worked out really well because I would have, if I would have gotten it done, I would have played it for you, but I kept changing it. So now you got to have the surprise. So I'm so glad you liked it. Oh, I love you. Thank you so much. I love you. All right, I'm gonna to try to get back to business here for a few minutes. So if, um, oh, you got me so rattled. Um, so people who want to know more about you, go to Gloria Taylor Music. And you will find links there to some of your really beautiful videos and information about uh, your albums. And when the new video comes out, with you and my bonus granddaughter. <laughs> yep. That just really special. Is there anything you want people to know before we, uh, before I have you sing us out? Oh, that was it, baby. That was my <sighs> sing out. I'm not, I'm not going to top that one. You got it. That was it. <laughs> well, you know what? I would, I would like just to get on my soapbox for one thing about just um, people needing help lately with, you know, I was just hearing a statistic. Um, that like depression is up so much because they're so, so in, I'm in the healing world. So um, I work with clients and I just want people to um, know you're not crazy because <laughs> so many people are feeling what you're feeling. And um, I just, I, I wrote a couple things down. I can't remember what I said, but just, um, just know that you're loved and know that people care for you and reach out. And um, cause it's, it's, this isn't going to last forever. And um I just, I just know that you are need. Everyone is needed in this world. So, so get help and get loved and feel loved and and um, because we need you. We need your gifts. We need because I'm speaking from experience because I've had my own uphills and downhills. Um, and it, it, these are really really tough times. I mean, they are. they're tough they are. emotionally. They're tough financially. Yeah. Um, just the whole uncertainty. We're not used to living with this kind of uncertainty. I mean, yeah. I kind of feel that a lot of times we should just pat ourselves on the back and celebrate ourselves just sometimes for making it for one day to the other. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I meditate. I'm really, really very serious about meditating every day. And I tell you, I can, I can start a meditation and feel like crap or feel whatever. And by the time I'm done, it's amazing. And then I feel like I can support myself in the world and be, be where I'm supposed to be. And give so, out, give to other people yeah. from there. Yeah. So oh, I miss you so much. Thank you. For miss you too. Uh, very so, fun. Thank you. And everybody check out GloriaTaylorMusic.com. And then I'm going to just, when I leave our meeting here, I'm just going to go have some happy tears because I love that song so much. Okay. Thanks, babe. Love you. Love you too, babe. Bye. Take care.